So recently I've realized that there's not many uh, videos out here on YouTube about how to use a spiral mixer. And in this video I'll show you how I use my spiral mixer to make dough for bread, for focaccia, for pizza. But I'm saying this like this right now because the rest of this video will be on the floor as my machine is on the floor and it's like 40 kilos so I cannot carry that up to a table level like this. Um, so yeah, let's go. So for making a dough with a spiral mixer, the thing you need first, well, is the spiral mixer. Here I have a Maxima MSM8. Um, it was a cheap machine, it's not the best. I would not recommend that you get it. I actually would recommend completely a, a different machine. The first step is to clean the machine. You don't know where the machine was, you don't know if there is any dust in it, so just give it a wipe inside, inside the bowl, and then we will start. So the first ingredient I will put in is actually the flour. I know that some people like to put in the water first, but don't know, I'm just used to it this way. In here I have about 10% whole grain and 90% uh, Uniqua Blue from Molino da Lechevana. It's a great flour, you can go up to 75-80% hydration with it. Today we will be just going up to um, I would say 70%. We now start with the entirety of the flour and 55% of the water. So I'll just put this in. Now that the flour is in there, the first step would be to give it a short mix just to mix up the flour if you're using two flours or to avoid having any clumps in that flour. Um, the machine here just only has a single speed and that speed is quite fast so it might actually get kind of dirty around here if I just do that. So I will actually start with the water. This water is just tap water, it's ice cold the tap water where I live is drinkable, so it actually depends on the water. Like, if you don't have drinkable tap water, you should not be using it to make dough. I have now put in that 55% um, water in there, it's just turning around now. What it's going to do is it's going to mix up the water and the flour and when it's mixed up to a certain level I will actually turn off the machine and I will do a 20 minutes auto lease. What this means is that I will let the dough, the dough rest for 20 minutes up to an hour. I actually do not want to let it rest overnight or something unlike bread bakers do. What they do is that they mix the um, some amount of water with flour and they let it rest overnight in the fridge in order to weaken the gluten. If you let it rest for a longer time it will actually the enzymes in the flour they it will start eating the gluten so it actually weakens the gluten which is really good for sourdough bread baking because it means that your bread in the oven will have a bigger puff at a temperature that is um, lower than what we use for pizza baking but in this practice, what we're doing right now is for pizza bowls, so I will actually not be making it auto loose and so I will not be taking this out, putting it in the fridge and then coming back together, uh, coming back tomorrow to put it together with the yeast and the salt. I'll just do all of it now, but I will give it a 20 minutes rest 
and the purpose for this 20 minutes rest is that it will have time to develop this gluten and it will not be getting warm because in this machine there is friction and as the dough is turning around with this friction what happens is that um, the temperatures get hot, hot, hotter and you need the temperature of the dough to be I would say 24 degrees Celsius at the end when the gluten is fully developed and you can pass a window pane test and we will come back to that window pane test in a second uh, but right now I'm just letting it mix around in there and in a second I'll be done turn off the machine and yeah in 20 minutes I'll return and do the rest okay to me this actually looks good so what I'll do now is I'll take a piece out and you'll be able to see in the dough cam I have over here how easy it is and how prone it is to ripping so it doesn't even like it is there is some elasticity in it of course but it just rips instead of holding together um, and in 20 minutes this will actually change it will be must, much more elastic uh, much stronger because the developing of the gluten will have started um, Okay, so in the meantime, what I'll actually do here is I will um, prepare the yeast, which is a sourdough mixture I have here. This is a um, 15 year old years old sourdough from Italy. It's 111, so it's liquid sourdough. It's not firm. I will mix it with the rest of our cold water. And at the end, we will add the salt without actually um, putting any water with it. Twenty minutes has passed, and our yeast—well, not really yeast, but sourdough uh, water mixture—to add the rest of the water is ready. Uh, but before that, I will actually control the dough to show you guys what I meant. As you can see, the dough is significantly more elastic. It has not really, it would not really pass the window pane test right now, but it doesn't rip as easily. Um, I will add, I will slowly start adding the rest of the water. The issue is um, the machine is actually made for a little more dough than this, and this is kind of pushing the limits of it. I hope it works. I haven't tested this little dough in it before. Um, but I mean, it looks like it's gonna work. I am doing a step, a method called bassinage, which means that I slowly add the water a little bit at a time so that. Um, dough can absorb it better. If I would just add the entire water right now and if my flour was not able to suck up that water that fast I would end up having a hot mess in my hands um, and this way the dough, the flour has more time to absorb the water. With this flour I could actually put in everything at once and it would be okay but with with most flowers it's you don't want to risk it so you should not dump everything in there and assume that you're gonna get a great dough out of it now optimally like you would get a machine that has multiple speeds because that way you could finish the dough faster without getting a high temperature on the dough now this machine has a single speed which means it's slower and it 
has the tendency to have a higher temperature because it doesn't get the gluten developed as fast so it needs more time and with the friction the temperature rises and rises and rises I hope that with the cold water I have it will be okay but there is no guarantee and I'll have to monitor it and I have a steak thermometer here so when do you add more water that's the question that I often get about this bastinage method you add more water when you see that there is a pumpkin form that's developed around the stick in the center and then you can slowly add more and the second you add more water you will hear this screeching sound like that it's it will sound different and when that sound disappears and you have a pumpkin again you can add more water and that's how this method works so now that I have a nice pumpkin as you can see I will add some more water pumpkin is now broken once again so I will have to wait a little until I can pour more water in because you really need to monitor what the dough is doing you cannot just do whatever you want and assume that you'll get a good dough for a consistent good dough you need consistent good methods and that is why you need to wait for the dough you cannot just dump everything in if the machine was faster I could, however, be getting stumped a lot faster than I am right now. I have a good pumpkin once again, so here I go. In the meantime, I will go measure out my salt. So I have it also ready to put in when I'm done with the water. I already have 23 degrees on the dough right now, which is way too hot, um, for this stage at least. Um, and what I will need to do because of this is that, yes, it will actually rise higher than 24 degrees. And I will actually measure at the end with this because I don't really trust the laser thermometer for this. And if I have, let's say, under 28 degrees it's fine I will put it in a cold place for like 10 20 minutes to bring it down to 24 degrees and then afterwards I'll leave it at room temperature for two hours now this is not panettone so you do not want to be kneading too long you do not want to over knead and this is actually why we have done the autolyze method to prevent from overneeding. I have right now it's winter so it's cold but in the summer you definitely want to add ice cubes while you're doing this especially in the second part of this when you're adding the rest of the water you definitely want at least 20 30 percent ice cubes in that water in order to prevent the temperature from rising so high and with the salt also you want to go sparingly you don't want to just dump it all in there you want to shake it tiny bit and spread it all over the dough you want to make sure you're using fine enough salt for this if it's too rough if it's too big particles it will not dissolve in dough and you will end up having those particles at the end and what's the purpose of putting the right amount of salt which is three percent if at the end you do not get it dissolved into the dough the salt is actually quite important for the development of dough uh, for the development of gluten because um, it will it's like this 
um, counterbalance to the yeast we have in there. Um, so it actually helps maintain that strength in the dough. It helps with the uh, strong gluten development and also the taste. If you've ever made pizza dough and forgot the salt, you know what I mean. It tastes terrible without the salt. Now it's actually time for the meat thermometer. 26 degrees. Is that good? No. Now you really want it to be under 26 degrees, under 28 max degrees. But what I'll do now is a window pane test. And it is, it seems to be quite strong actually. As you can see. I think this passes it. So our dough is complete. But that doesn't mean that we are done, obviously. Okay, let me get the container for this dough. Now, I have a, an IKEA Tupperware box for this. What I will do is I will oil all over inside, but not too much. You just pour in the oil and with your fingers you spread it all around. And then I'll take the dough out and put it into this. I am using an olive oil that's not very tasty, it's made for cooking actually, um, but it's fine, it's fine, you really don't need the extra taste of the olive oil in your dough, uh, many people prefer it without, true Neapolitan is without, I'll just take out the dough. Now taken out the dough, it looks like a mess in there. I will do some folds and I will show you how I do those folds on the other camera. So I just want a smooth surface on top. I, I really don't care about it being um, folded too much over. I don't want to overstress the dough, it's already too hot. It just needs to be. This is such a little amount of dough that I could just like make a bowl basically out of it with my hands. It doesn't need that many folds. Just go on the bottom, seal it up, and boom. This will wait at room temperature for two hours and then it will go into the fridge for about three days. So our dough is complete in its container, um, it looks really good, it just needs to cool down a little so I'll take it outside, it's really cold outside so it's gonna take like 10 minutes for it to cool down to 24 degrees I believe. The next step is to clean the machine, you need hot water in a sponge, pour it inside and just clean it as good as possible. Um, so. A good machine is not a machine that can develop gluten with a very good flour. If you have a flour that can hardly take 70%, but you know that it can take 70%, and your machine for some reason cannot do the 70%, it's probably because of the machine. Now this machine is good enough for what I use. I use very high quality flour that can absorb water up to 75%, and that's why it's okay for me to use a mediocre machine to make the dough that I'm making. If I needed 
a dough that would be really hard to get 70%, I would need a better machine. But for what I use, this machine is good enough. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, thanks for watching. And yeah, seems it's my time to take out the dog. Bye bye.